Now, one of Britain's biggest internet dating companies has admitted paying its employees to set up hundreds of fake profiles to fool people into handing over their money. A Channel 4 News investigation has found that Global Personals, which runs more than 7,000 dating websites, systematically duped customers for years, promising to help them find love while secretly exploiting them. Sarah Smith has this exclusive report. Who says you can't buy love? Every month, millions of us pay fees to online dating agencies that hold out the promise of finding us a partner. After all, 20 or 30 quid a month seems like a pretty small down payment on lifelong happiness. No dating site can guarantee to find you love or even to find you a date, but they do promise to introduce you to other people who are looking for the same thing. Real people who there is at least a chance you might meet or possibly even more. Now, a Channel 4 News investigation can reveal one of Britain's biggest internet dating companies hired staff who systematically scammed innocent daters for money. Many well-known publications and radio stations offer dating websites. And if you sign up to some of these, you might really have joined Global Personals, the company that runs all these services. They say it's their mission to find people love. There's got to be love. It's as simple as that. But money, not love, was the real priority, according to Ryan Pitcher, who left the company in 2010. He describes how employees set up fake profiles and use them to trick real members into paying membership fees. We had a team of uh, 19, 20 people, and they, um, what they would do is they will take pictures from MySpace social networking sites and use them in profiles. Pictures of other people? Picture of, pictures of other people. So you'll take Helga from Iceland and make her into Helen from Manchester and uh, write a profile, uh, put, put the photos up, make a profile, you'd use her features, so obviously blue eyes, whatever, blonde hair, um, you'd use her features, just put that in the profile and uh, invent a whole new person. And then people would just start messaging and you'd, you'd reply, to it, reply to those messages. So why did the sites need to use these fake profiles or pseudos when they had millions of genuine members? A lot of them that I spoke to as a pseudo, um, as a fake person, didn't have much about them uh, whatsoever. And in the real world, they weren't going to find a date, unfortunately. So what they do is they sign up to online, they see all these you know, nice advertisements. If they're not getting messages back and replies from real people, then after a month, they're just going to sign off. You know, you could keep stringing along a, a guy or a girl, mostly guys, you could, you could string them along for up to, you know, 12 months, 24 months. They'll keep on paying, you know. So without it, you know, they, they, would be making, they wouldn't be making as much money as what they are. They're never going to meet any of these people. They're not, no. They, um, they, as I say, it's all about stringing them along and keeping them on, like, tenter hooks. The pseudos had a whole string of excuses to get out of meeting real members, often telling them they'd started a relationship with another user on the site. We also talked to one of Ryan's team. He's now ashamed of working as a pseudo and so he doesn't want us to identify him, but he did confirm everything Ryan told us about how the fake profile teams worked. He says on his very first day, the boss warned him not to talk about the work he was doing. The managing director came and spoke to me that afternoon and said, don't worry about it too much. He didn't ever say, don't tell other people about this. But in no uncertain terms, that's what he was trying to get at. We can't really disclose this to too many other people. Did you tell your friends exactly what you did? Only my girlfriend and my best friend knew. It's not something that I made public knowledge. I didn't tell my family. Because you were embarrassed or because you thought the company wanted to keep it confidential? No, I wasn't worried about the company. It was more because my morals and my families are similar and I knew they would think it was disgraceful. I knew they'd be ashamed of me, so I kept it harsh for that reason. Global Personals admit they did employ people to send out false messages to their members. In a statement, they said, Global Personals was one of the first online dating companies to stop using fake profiles. For almost three years, we have actively encouraged other online dating businesses to also stop this practice. The flirty but fake users helped Global Personals build up a bank of over two million members. Members who are now very upset to discover what the company is doing with their personal information. Global Personals run thousands of dating sites that look like they're all totally separate. But sign up to one and your profile will appear across the entire network. Here's how it works. 
Sonia signs up to a dating site aimed at jazz fans. She uploads a photo and fills in all her most personal information. Her profile has now entered the Global Personals database, where it can be seen by users on any of their sites. Tom is registered on a hard rock site, but he can see Sonia's profile and thinks she's signed up to the same site that he is. So if Tom sends Sonia a message, when she receives it, it appears to have come from a fellow jazz lover. Now that's fine, as long as you aren't too fussy about who can see your profile. But people like Jenny Beard choose their dating sites with care. As mother to 10-year-old Will, Jenny signed up to Just Single Parents, because that's what she's looking for, another single parent. Well, your profile has moved elsewhere. Let's have a look on this computer at Nuts Hot Dates. Is this a site you ever thought you would find yourself on? No, no, certainly not some, somewhere that I would have thought I would meet anyone that I would be interested in or that anyone would be interested in me, quite frankly, as well. It's quite shocking. Um, I'm quite surprised that there is nothing that I can do about what sites I'm on because I chose a site particularly for what I was looking for and that's nuts hot dates is not what I was looking for. Global Personals told us, when members subscribe to one of our sites, they're advised in the terms and conditions that their details will be made available to members of different sites on the relevant shared database. The Information Commissioner does not think that's good enough. You can't say deep, deeply buried in the small print, there's a get out clause that says we can do anything with your data, because Consumers have an expectation, and you, you wouldn't have signed up for a niche website if you expected your information to be shared with other dating sites that have a completely different profile. It's not fair. It's probably a, a breach of the law. We must investigate. So if you're using the internet to look for that special someone, you might want to investigate where your most intimate information is being displayed and who it is you're really talking to.